All right, guys, it's Aussie Grimm with the Gamers Grimm, and we're here today to talk about uh, the recent events uh, with the Ubisoft director uh, telling players they need to get more comfortable with not owning games. And uh, there are some media outlets that would agree with my particular position. Uh, I'm going to play kind of devil's advocate here. Uh, this, of course, is yet another uh, business issue that uh, gamers have brought on themselves. Um, I know years ago I had a lot of friends tell me that I was a crazy person uh, for even suggesting that microtransactions and cash shops were just going to be the norm. And uh, I wasn't wrong then, and I'm probably not wrong here. Uh, you know, way back then, uh, I told people, I said, you're not going to get rid of cash shops because we took about a billion dollars out of the gaming uh, publishers' uh, <laughs> pockets back then. And uh, that was due to the fact that we demanded digital download and we shut down all the big box stores and all the rental places and uh, game stops. Uh, people can look... And if you think I'm crazy, you can see that microtransactions and cash shops uh, all coincided uh, with the downfall of big box stores and uh, exchange stores like Hastings, GameStop, no more Blockbuster. Um, you know, people often forget that those companies would order 100,000 to 500,000 units of those games uh, to be sold or to be rented. And uh, we took that away from them. So they, they had to uh, do what they had to do to make money. But that's really not the point. Um, yeah, digital download was the first step. And uh, we're on the precipice of uh, something that I call the hardware apocalypse. And uh, what we need to think about is in five to ten years, where is the graphical... Uh, quality of gaming going to be and uh, it's a pretty simple one we're already seeing video cards and systems that can run native 4 to 5k at 160 to 200 frames per second 60 to 120 megahertz and these are out of the box systems that uh, are a little bit pricey now but they're not going to be so pricey in five to ten years and so Another market in gaming is leaving, and that is the upsell market. Uh, what is an upsell market? An upsell market is that you sell somebody something newer and better and uh, with a, of a higher quality than the previous product. And that is leaving gaming by 2030, ladies and gentlemen. There's not going to be an upsell market for gaming publishers. So you have to imagine how are they going to make their profits? How are they going to continue to retain customers? Because they can no longer upsell you. So what I mean by upselling is if, let's take the Witcher series for instance. Obviously the Witcher 1 was of better quality than the Witcher 2. Both graphically, performance wise. And the same thing applies from the Witcher 2 to the Witcher 3. So with Witcher 4 on the horizon, that is going to probably be the final game from that series that is part of the upsell market. Because from Witcher 4 to Witcher 5, which I know seems like a long ways away for a lot of you, but trust me, as somebody who's been gaming now for 37 years, um, that is not that far away. Um, I, I stood in line to get Morrowind when I was younger. So I have seen the, the market shift multiple times and that is not that far away. We are closer to 2030 than we are to 2010. And that was when the market shifted with microtransactions. So we are on the verge of them losing this because when you look at the uh, concept of The Witcher 5, the Witcher 5 will not look anything different, really, from The Witcher 4. There will be an infinitesimal uh, increase in graphical fidelity and performance. And these gaming companies understand that, that this decade is the last decade 
of the upsell market for video games. That means that after this generation of gaming, all they will be able to sell you are skins, quests, and digital download, downloadable content. Because The Witcher 5 will be just The Witcher 4 with all the same graphical qualities, lighting, and performance. So they're only going to be able to sell you DLC, skins, as well as the occasional new license. And that's a difficult thing to uh, come to terms with. But it's something that I think every gamer is going to have to. I understand where the Ubisoft uh, executive is coming from. It's from a business standpoint. Publishers don't make games for the present. They make games for five years into the future and five years into the past. That's what publishers are thinking about. And I know that's difficult for developers and as consumers of games to, to try to understand what their mentality is. But the publishing companies know that they will no longer be able to sell you a new, better, more updated version of upcame, upcoming video games after this generation of of consoles and video cards passes. By 2030, every single game on the market will be required to be a live service, live supported game because most of those games will stick graphically and performance wise for 10, 20, 30 years because nothing's going to change unless there's some radical uh, advances in the quantum computing department which I'm not going to hold my breath for. Um, but it also leaves us in a very positive position as this decade will start to wind down as gamers, and that is that a lot of the games that we've come to love over the years will likely be brought up and brought into that generation to become a part of that uh, new sort of style of gaming, of live support. So while we may not own our games in the future, we will sort of own our time and we will have access to all sorts of games. And there is all sorts of other possibilities that uh, have to do with AI and gaming development and generation. And, and I'm assuming that we will see some pretty radical advancements in that place as well. But as it stands, publishers are going to make changes based on what the market looks like. And the market looks like the upsell is gone. You will not be able to upsell gamers come 2028, 2027, because every game will look exactly the same as the game before it. And one of the things that they will not do is do, you know, planned obsolescence with gaming. We will lose our minds. We will riot in the streets. Uh, even today, you can see that if they shut down old games and old servers, the community will come together and resurrect that game. They will crack the code. They will hack it and set up private servers. They don't stand a chance if they try to do planned obsolescence for their gaming. So the only choice that publishers have right now is to move over to live service, cash shops, and microtransactions. What we as a community really need to do is make sure that we enforce a solid framework and structure of fairness in pricing and fairness in that the support that those games re release. We need to spend less time complaining about how the market changes aren't fitting with our desire to own or buy games a certain way because if that were the case, we'd all still be going down to Toys R Us and praying and hoping that they had a copy of your favorite game, you know. But those days are over. I'm glad they went away. I'm glad they started to do pre-orders. I'm glad they started to do digital download. I didn't get to play certain games for months because I couldn't get down to the store in time when I was a kid. So always remember, that was what I grew up with. I had to rush down to Toys R Us and hope that they had a copy of my game. Otherwise, I might be waiting 6 to 9 to 16 weeks 
before I could ever get a copy. So things change. You got to just roll with the punches, understand why things are happening the way that they're happening, and make decisions about how you uh, deal with those things and approach those things as a consumer and form a community around what is more important rather than nostalgia uh, and focus on what you can do to make these new and changing experiences positive for yourself and other gamers that will be joining our community in the future. Um, I really don't have anything else to say about it other than that. So I want to thank all of you for coming along and listening to my, you know, stupid opinion on it. Um, this has been Ozzy Grin with the Gamers Grin, and uh, we will catch you next time.